Uh, right, we are going to introduce our next guest now. He is a British explorer, an extreme athlete, and he's taken on an incredible challenge. He has traveled the Yangtze River in China, 4,000 mile trek. Uh, it's the third longest river in the world. I mean, this is a mammoth feat that took him 355 days and saw the adventurer threatened by wild animals, uh, sickness and harsh conditions along the way. I mean, that's putting it mildly. He is the first person to ever complete this journey solo. He is Ash Dykes and he is here in the studio now in a nice comfy seat. Put your yeah, feet up. You deserve it, Ash. <laughs> I mean, talk to me, the third longest river in the world yeah. and so many different terrains and different climates to go through. Right. Yeah. What an so epic challenge. Diverse. Oh, it was wonderful, you know, in a beautiful place. China's got a little bit of every country in one. Um, but yeah, you're right, started at high altitude, minus 20s, but then it mixed to a tropical environment and all of the different provinces were like their own different countries, you know, different sort of environments, terrains, wildlife, food, culture. So we were really trying to catch that on the international documentary filming as we went through. So it wasn't 352 days of solid walking. I got to take time out to soak up the culture and really try to show that off um, online on my Instagram, but also with the Chinese social handles as well. So it was wonderful, yeah. yeah. It became a, a social media sensation in China. Purely because we opened it up for people to join, you know. If, apart from the dangerous parts, of course, you know, once I got off the mountains, Yeah, those I Instagram influencers up. won't go through the dangerous bits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, it was just super interactive. Um, and it was just, the uptake in China and the support was amazing. We had 100 at the end. We were live streaming to millions and all the press and media they were, were learning there. a lot about... They, they were well. shocked, yeah, so it wasn't just the, the, the Westerners that I was sharing the stories, it was also the Chinese that were actually shocked with what I was sharing, you know. Uh, but I was also working with the WWF um, to spread more environmental awareness on the ecosystem of the Yangtze River, so that was a big part of it as well. So what, what surprised you most? Was it, was it the, the kind of the scenery or the people? Because I think those of us in the West sometimes have quite a stereotypical view of the Chinese, of, of China, the mm. communism and so on. Yeah, I would say it was just, yeah, the diversity and the people, how amazing they were. And yeah, some people think, like I had a friend join me that thought China would be very suppressed, you know, they don't have... Uh, they use different social platforms, but he was shocked. Everyone's just super upbeat, super mm. happy. They're all so warm and welcoming. It's a pleasant place to be, really is. Well, let's talk about the danger. Let's talk bears, wolves and guns. <laughs> yeah. That was a part of it, yeah. So we were, you know, we were warned by the locals, actually, that the day uh, before we were in this region, a lady had been attacked and, and killed by a pack of wolves, unfortunately. Um, and we were then followed for the next two days. I say we, it was me and a camera guy. Well, hang on a second, you were warned. Your camera crew were filming the locals, warning you about the woman attacked by wolves. But you didn't find out until That's later right. because yeah. you didn't understand the language. <laughs> yeah. So we were like, oh, it's OK, thank you, bye-bye. And, yeah, we find out. And they're getting that crazy British man. Yeah, pretty they're, 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 that's, I mean, that's, that's a, a bear print, isn't that's it? That's a bear print, Just, just yeah. before that, we saw you fighting off to what, what I thought it would look like bears, but are actually dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So they're big, they're to better mastiffs. They, they protect the local nomads and their goods away from any bears. They protect the livestock from wolves as well. And they were actually probably more of a threat than the bears and the mm -hmm. wolves, because the bears try to stay away. As long yeah. as you blow your whistle mm -hmm. and you make yourself aware to them, they'll always try to stray away. But the mastiffs, they, yeah, really, they can be brutal. <laughs> Bears, wolves and mastiffs, or oh, yeah. rather you than yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, but you touched there on, on the conservation uh, project you were working as you as you went along because you recorded, as you followed the river, the yeah. levels of plastic pollution. That's it, that's what it. What did you see? Because we talk about it a lot here on Sky News as part of our Sky Ocean yeah. Rescue campaign and we focus on the oceans, but of course the mm. third longest river in the world and China as well and their record on pollution. What did you find? That's it, you know, and I, I, along the way I was actually using like a water-to-go filtration bottle, so that stopped me from using almost 1,400 half-litre single-use plastics. Uh, and we were providing these free to schools and we were talking about plastic pollution. But you know, the Yangtze's getting cleaner and cleaner. There's a big awareness now. People are aware of the damage and it's, it's changing fast. They're clear, clearing up the rivers. There's species on the brink of extinction now steadying and they believe in the next few years that the numbers will start to increase. That's like the sturgeon fish uh, and the finless porpoise dolphin. 
Uh, so, yes, yeah, it is amazing to, to learn more on that side of things. Well, we can look at the moment that you completed your journey. This is your big celebration crossing that finish line. And, you know, there are people running with you, and uh, not all of them, I'm sure, were there along no. the way. They're the glory hunters at the end. Because, <laughs> you know, on day one, you had four members of your team drop out. Yeah, and actually throughout the 16 or 17 people that joined me, there was 10 people who had to abandon the expedition. And that was mainly altitude sickness, injury or fear of wildlife um, and yeah you're right four of those were before we even started the expedition wow. I mean, this isn't this isn't your first kind of extreme walk or extreme journey I mean when when you're not doing these do you just like sit on your backside you know <laughs> watch Jeremy Kyle eat Chris in your boxer shorts or do you actually do you, do you are you out in the hillsides you know yes yeah, so so this so particular on. expedition took two years to plan so it was meticulous planning what are the dangers how can I overcome them uh, we had a book, Mission Possible, we're currently planning for the next book. Uh, we were working on TV, we've actually secured different international TV commissions. We're hopefully trying to work on getting it here in the UK. And so there's, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes uh, that not a lot of people do see, but there's a lot of training and preparation involved. And yeah, you're right, Mongolia, Madagascar, been doing this now for the past 10 years. It's pretty much my career, my profession. Uh, but I think this is still the warm-up, still getting started. Okay, well, much more to come. Ash, thank you so much thank for coming in and much. telling us all about your incredible expedition. Uh, Ash Dyke's the first person to walk uh, the Yangtze River in China. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, maybe us feel quite lazy this morning. Yeah, I've got yeah. a bacon sandwich sitting yeah, down here. Yeah, we struggle, we struggle to walk up the stairs here in Sky Towers.